Automation, by definition, is confounding in its own right as follows. The technique of making a process or system operate automatically. The word derivation is in the definition. So by definition, meaning the state of being operated automatically or automatically controlled operation of a process or system by mechanical or electronic devices that takes the place of human labor. Remember the last part of the definition, take place of human labor, because that is the key to understanding automation and that nifty little acronym currently on everyone's tongue, AI. And with that, it's essential to contextualize the definition of automatic. That is for our purposes, done or produced as if by a machine and or acting or regulating a mechanism by itself. Supplanting roles or processes by others. Does this mean robotic? Here we go again. Now with the definition of robotic, yes and no. The definition of robotic is in this context, that of a machine. For example, a device that automatically performs complicated, often repetitive tasks. That doesn't refer to a process necessarily, but maybe it could refer to a process. A process is a procedure, something we do in order to achieve a certain result. For now, we'll leave a fairly recent buzzword alone, RPA or robotic process automation. But we can clearly debunk that by saying that combining words with peculiar definitions only adds to the bureaucracy of trying to get a handle of what this video is all about. Automation defined in or for healthcare. So why have we started this video with a focus on trying to define automation? Simply this, because every term we've drilled into to generate a good definition of automation is commonly misused and misunderstood, especially in the healthcare administrative silo. If we suggest a process that reduces human labor, is that automation? Let's hold off on the answer to that for a bit and let's discuss an example. In 2002, AMI devised a process called the system and method for the automatic coding of medical records. Let's take this apart. Is it a system? Yes, a computer program. Is it a method? Yes, simply stated, it scans through a medical document and looks for medical terminology and associates that to an alphanumeric system. Back in 2002, it was ICD-9 or the International Classification of Diseases, 9th Revision. Now on ICD-10. The alphanumeric system we are referring to is medical coding. This defines coding and medical records. But is it automatic? It runs and processes without intervention. So in our reality, the answer to this is no, it's not automatic. Why not? It does the same job of going through a medical record, just like a trained full-time employee in that same role. It identifies terminology and does it incredibly quickly. Hell, the system can read through 3000 page PDFs in one minute and 30 seconds. Does that make this system automatic? Does the system supplant human labor and why not? It should be considered automation. Automation must meet the following criteria. One, it's a system. It's a program running on a computer hardware. Two, it's a method. The program has a process of reading through unstructured text and identifying medical terminology and associating that terminology with a separate published medical coding system. Three, it's automatic. It performs a complicated task in the identification of terminology and the associated coding system. Four, but does it meet the most important criteria? Human acceptance. Are humans in decision-making roles able to embrace automation? If you have a system, how do you know how good it is? Well, with AI, there are two concepts to consider. One is the method to how it operates. Note, some of our previous videos discuss how machine learning is a faulty methodology for this healthcare space. Garbage in, garbage out, the internet as a repository, and not narrowly focused. But rather, how much time and experience does the system have? This gives fledgling startup companies looking to capitalize in the market a big disadvantage, because time is just like the parallels with human development. The more experience a system and a method have, the better foundation there is to perform complicated automatic tasks towards eventual human acceptance. At least one can assert, right? To answer, how do you know how good a system is that purports to provide automation? Let's look at some of our history. Back in the day, meaning in 2002 to 2006, the answer was frankly no. Why not? Because the self-determined industry experts, which included organizations and large industry companies, 
said it couldn't be good enough. The industry even came up with a downgraded label and called what we had developed a brand new name, at the time, Computer Assisted Coding. Look it up in Wikipedia and it's not even there. What it really meant was, no matter what, a human must review what output was generated to make sure it was acceptable. Who made their judgment right and us wrong, especially in a healthcare segment that has no answer key? In 2006, we disproved that by simply publishing a case study abstract, meeting today's coding challenges with computer-assisted coding as a focal point for positive change in health information management. And we attempted to drive a change in mindset that still presents the challenge today. It had an academic flavor with some objectivity thrown in for good measure. That same year, we delved into working closely with a healthcare hospital facility in Western Pennsylvania. To better understand the dynamics, this really meant a representative director in health information management believed in the technology's capabilities and chose to spend time working with the technology and advocating for its assimilation and use in their billing and coding process. More importantly, the site succeeded and continues to operate through a distributor with some real-world effective automation in their work queue. We can provide many more examples in auditing and workflow, as well as coding, throughout our continuing business tenure. So let's ask another related question. Is this all automation? The answer is yes, because here, more than in any other healthcare space, the human acceptance criteria is not an answer key, but the human condition. In this case, humans act as judges, but the answer is also a no, because the assimilation of any process is subject to some advocate or advocates who are willing to take a positive leap to replace human labor tasks. Specifically, how do they feel about the system? And unfortunately, we're not machines, and that answer can be driven by emotions, business, politics, with rational and irrational arguments. We actually see these barriers today in current events globally, with the call for restrictions on AI against companies such as Microsoft and Google spearheading the AI buzz. This morphs into the human condition, and wow, that's a big topic. Without philosophizing about the current state of it all, we should get back to the basics in our small corridor of discussion. With that, what type or types of individuals determine whether something is capable of automation? Certainly not the inventors of the process, no matter how powerful and persuasive to the favorable economics they may be. Expert or not, empirical or not, objective or not, or anything in between, the human condition is the most impactful aspect to progress in healthcare specifically, as we are focused on healthcare administration, especially when the subject matter is not black or white. So let's talk about the AMI auditor working on the payer side, because in many ways, this very indirectly links us with the current class actions against some very large payers, mainly United Healthcare and Humana, at least so far. Does the AMI auditor meet the criteria for automation as we discussed? Let's take a look. It's a system. It is a program running on computer hardware. It's a method. The program has a process of reading through gobs of scanned documents, maybe PDFs, comparing the diagnoses and drivers for that diagnosis from both a coding and clinical perspective, and in that process, analyzing thresholds and terminology, identifying medical terminology with a separate published medical coding system. It's automatic. It performs a complicated task in the identification of terminology and the associated coding system, replacing expert nurse coders. But does it meet the most important criteria? human acceptance. Do humans in decision-making roles embrace automation? Number four is the crux of the question regarding automation. The answer can be yes. First, there needs to be belief and or trust that it will meet human acceptance objectives. Then there is a level of performance required for automation success, as the technology has to prove that it can at least perform to the standard, more likely exceeding the standard that humans would currently achieve when auditing a medical record for payer reimbursement. How do the experts know when the software meets the criteria for automation? Automation equaling or supplanting the human task? The answer is, as we've already stated, they must be advocates of the technology that you are presenting to or working with at a minimum, meaning they know that the technology will perform correctly through a given process. This includes not only the mechanics of the software, but the representatives of that process or project. Call them project managers. Call them stakeholders. 
And this is a dynamic function because if they move, so may the determination for automation and mostly from our experiences, not favorably. That aside, the advocates or stakeholders must know how the technology works so that if adjustments must be made to meet a given customer objective, the platform has the ability to be flexible to adjust to a given customer or need. When the question gets asked of us whether our system does automation or our system is automated, we can say emphatically, yes, but we've determined that four components are met once there's human acceptance. And again, here they are in sharp focus. It's a system, it's a method, it's automatic, and now for the big one, it requires human acceptance. Human acceptance is a persuasive phenomenon, and it is not in our direct control. Psychological inertia is defined as resistance or disinclination to movement, action, or change. Inertia is a huge enemy, but explains why the power of the large pillars in the healthcare system, mainly why EMR vendors and other large corporate entities have so much control over their customers. At best for health information management, each facility without external pressures would translate unique situations as it's often conveyed to us, requiring its own level of automation. And while it's a system and it's a method, remain relatively static and unchanged from situation to situation. The automatic and requires human acceptance components will be constantly changing. In fact, the power of human acceptance can weigh on the method component where the decision makers for human acceptance want the empowerment to change the method to accommodate what they perceive right or wrong as their unique use case. For us, that would be a good change or buy-in in order to evoke human acceptance. Customization and pliancy becomes a strength in attaining human acceptance. Now we can circle back to the title of this video. Can automation in healthcare really work? The answer is a resounding yes, but we must as vendors and suppliers do everything we can to provide comfort to the technologically averse to mitigate any negative human condition. It is with this focus on the human condition where we must address and build confidence and build relationships and understandings that address technology automation advantages. And again, in our space, it is not cookie cutter, nor will it be in the foreseeable future. Regardless, this is the only way to make real progress in the areas of healthcare administration, advancing now and in the decades to come. Keep pounding away at it. Seems like our motto. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to our channel to get more updates as we release new videos on these exciting topics.